and now there's one. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's we brought this up before with uh -huh. if if God exists in the sense, and I realize we're focusing more on the Christian concept of God. Sure, sure. Um, you know, maybe maybe Ganesh and Shiva have conversations. Oh. Uh, I don't want to. Don't want to slight anybody who believes in you know more than one God because I don't know that that makes you more. Yeah, non-omniscient gods can have conversations. <laughs> but but if if uh, if you have this omnipotent being that is uh, perfect and complete and, and uh, omniscient and omnipotent, mm -hmm. then there's no impetus to action. There's no right. reason for it to create anything in the first place. It doesn't need anything, um, and yet so it's perfectly self-contained. You must ask yourself, if there is a God who created all this, what does God get out of it? What's the purpose of all this? If it is, as, as some Christians seem to believe, even though they probably wouldn't phrase it this way, some kind of soul-filtering system to filter it's good souls down what one it pipe is. And, yeah. and, and bad souls down another, um, why is this system the preferred method for doing that? Um, why, why did he create the souls in the first place and need to filter them? Yeah. But, but that's not what everybody believes about right. all this. Some yeah. of them believe that God just wants us to, to love him. And, uh, and okay, f fine, if you want somebody to love you, um, then uh, you act in a way that ensures that they love you. And that's not uh, leaving a note on the refrigerator in somebody else's handwriting that tells them, clean your room. Uh, or I'll beat the crap out of you, and if you do, I'll buy you ice cream, and then never showing yeah. your face to the child. I mean, that's not a way to and garner love or respect or appreciation. As a soul filter, it's amazing how ham-handed ham he, 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 he dealt with it. I mean, first, it made sense, all right? You have this heaven that's this great elite place to go, and only the top-notch people can get there because they follow all these arcane rules somehow, right? But I guess God realized when he kept phoning, you know, to the, to the gates, the pearly gates, and, and the guy kept saying, no, no one's here. We, we don't get it. You know, no one can meet these, these strictures you've put on people, coveting, you know. How can they not think about a white elephant, right? And so uh, the God said, well, I'm going to have to create a gigantic loophole to allow some people into heaven. And so he came up with this whole Jesus crucify, sacrifice, blood thing. And now anyone can get in. All they have to do is deeply believe this one thing on their deathbed, and they're in. It's no longer the kind of elite place you, you once thought it was going to be with all these guys who really followed these hard rules. Plus, if you take a look at the list now of people just, who are... Any trash can get in. Yeah. <laughs> You take a look at the list of the people who are generally excluded from heaven uh, uh, by, you know, most Christians. Uh, I'd mm -hmm. rather hang out with those folks anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, you give me a choice from hanging out with Pat Robertson or Richard Dawkins. Well, I know which right. way you're going. Voltaire, uh, man. You know, you know, oh, yeah. Voltaire, Isaac Asimov, Carl Sagan, Albert Einstein, just the list goes on and on and on. I'd rather hang out with any of those people for five minutes or, you know, than, than be stuck with Falwell for eternity. Uh, that that that's hell. That's not hell. Of course, it, it's it's hard having a conversation with your feet on fire, but still, yeah. it's well, like yeah, yeah, it's better than sacrificing your integrity. You've got to be able to tune out the screaming eventually. It's better than sacrificing your integrity. But anyway, we got uh, Stan on the phone. How you doing? Hi, I'd like to 